Welcome into the Alabama Football Report. I am Tom Downey, and what a performance that was out of the Crimson Tide. A 42-28 to win at home, a game that not technically, but basically clinches the SEC West for the Crimson Tide and keeps their college football playoff hopes very much alive. If you liked that win against LSU, I think every single Alabama fan watching right now should like the video right now. Let's get into our overreaction Sunday. Number one, hey, you know, maybe Jalen Milrow deserves some buzz for Heisman Trophy. If we're going to keep acting like Jaden Daniels is going to get invited to New York despite being on a multi-loss team, maybe we should give some love to Jalen Milrow. By far, I thought, him his most impressive performance of the season. You know, producer Chris and I were talking after the game. We're like, that's the offense we thought we were going to see all year. Well, Jalen Milrow's out there running around. He was highly efficient passing the football. Every, it, look, it's a bad LSU defense. We knew that going in. That was an awesome effort out of Jalen Milrow. You have 219 passing yards, 155 yards on the ground. The sacks went down a little bit as well. Four total scores. He was awesome in this football game. That, I think that is the best we've seen from Milrow. He was absolutely cooking. We saw more of those design runs that we've been asking and begging and pleading for for the past two months. They finally busted him out. Again, I thought we were going to see that version of the offense where they ran the ball insanely effectively, the tune of, what, 200-plus yards, uh, 260, I think it was, on the ground. They, they were dominant. That is by far the best performance we've seen out of this Alabama offense. Now, to be fair, Milrow missed a few throws. You're never going to complete 100%. It's, it's, it's not Madden. It's not NCAA 14, and eventually the maybe we'll get the new game at some point as well. You're not going to complete you know, 90% of your passes, but you averaged 9.5 yards through the air with Milrow, and 6.3, it was actually 288 that they ran for, almost 300 yards as a team. That was an awesome, awesome effort. Very impressed, very impressed by what Milrow and the offense did. We'll come back to that. But I think this, this team, this Alabama team, can absolutely beat Georgia, which means they can absolutely win a national championship with Jalen Milrow at the helm. The way they have been playing, they have the ability. Georgia's a good football team that they are still going to scrap and fight and claw. Uh, they haven't been as dominant this year, however. Not that they've been bad. You know, Missouri's actually been pretty decent. They've had some up and down performances, just like Bama has. If Bama has their A game, they can find a way to beat them. Here's Georgia's last five games, right? They barely beat Auburn. They did blow out Kentucky, to be fair. Vanderbilt's a bad football team. That game was a little bit closer than it should have been for a while. Missouri was close for a while. They took care of business against Florida. So it seems like every game, a little bit close to maybe what you would expect there. I like what I've seen from Carson Beck this year, Georgia's quarterback. We'll see if Brock Bowers can play in that potential SEC championship game. Bama's defense can step up. They can control the football. They absolutely can. They, they can win this football game if you take care of business first. Do not uh, eat the, the uh, rat poison, as, as Nick Saban likes to call it. Don't get ahead of yourself. you still got to take care of Kentucky. You can get ahead of Chattanooga. You, you can sleepwalk that first half, as they seemingly always do against the F FCS opponents, then wake up and win by 40. And then that Auburn's going to give you a fight. There's, there's a lopsided Iron Bowl always means it's a much closer game than it should normally be. So do you think that Alabama can beat Georgia? Why for yes and for no? This will be today's pinned comment, so if the ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there, we'll let us know. Number three, Terrion Arnold and Kool-Aid McKinstry are absolutely a top cornerback duo. Both of these guys are highly, highly impressive. Uh, Terrion Arnold gets the attention, because he had the two pass breakups, the INT against LSU, against that very dynamic, that, that very dynamic passing attack. Uh, Arnold targeted nine times, allowed six, six uh, catches, so six of nine. Spam nice in the comment section. 68 yards, a decent amount of that was on the one big chunk play he allowed after some catch stuff, not too concerned there. But an INT, two pass breakups. Teams do not throw at Kool-Aid McKinstry, folks. Targeted four times, four times when Jaden Daniels and Garrett Nussmeyer included you know, dropped back 34 times total. They, they were not looking his way. Malik Neighbors had his way, to be fair. Brian Thomas has been getting buzzed as a first-round pick. Three catches, 36 yards. They were not looking the way of Kool-Aid McKinstry. Teams are scared of him. And Terry on Arnold's good enough to take advantage of all those targets. That's a good thing for Bama as they get set up down the stretch. 
Today's show was made possible by Prize Picks. It is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It is just you against the numbers that are battling thousands of other players. The pros, the sharks, etc. You simply pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. I have been super hot this year on the flex play. I take three of my three favorite ones and then I just need two of them to hit. To, to you know, capitalize on my earnings there. My NFL picks this week. Isaiah Pacheco, more than 59 and a half rushing yards. Obviously, the, the international game already uh, over here. Check that one off. Pacheco hit that one fairly easily. Or not easily, but he had it you know, midway through the fourth quarter. Joe Burrow, more than passing yards on tonight. Give me more than CeeDee Lamb receiving yards in the 425 p.m. Eastern time slot. Head over to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. And use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Link will be in the comments and the description. Again, it's prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS. Back to some more corner conversation here. Teams are scared to throw the way of Kool-Aid McKinstry. They, they don't want to. This is what we, mean, we call like a lockdown, shutdown corner. That's Kool-Aid McKinstry. He's shutting down half the field. It takes it away. It means more throws to the middle of the field, which can be more dangerous and also bigger plays from that perspective. Jaden Daniels was 10 of 16 on throws over the middle. Beyond that, he was 5 of 8 on throws outside the hashes. That's fine, but the big chunk, there was the one big chunk play from Leak Neighbors, I guess, the, the 46-yarder wool out there. But they're, t- they're, they're taking away stuff. They're forcing it opposite directions. And when you got one lockdown corner, Makes life easier because you can help and contribute on the other, you know, two thirds of the field that are available. Now, if you are a diehard Alabama football fan, this is the place for you. We will have live CFP rankings reveal for you guys on Tuesday. Hit that sub button, tune in, don't miss out. YouTube.com slash at Roll Tide TV. Number four, uh, look. Tip of the cap for a unit we've been pretty mean to. I'm not mean. Uh, constructively criticized the offensive line much or many times this year. I thought they were impressive. Only give up two sacks against LSU. Still don't know if LSU is going to use Harold Perkins properly, but hey, I digress. I think both of those were Milrow's fault to at least a certain extent, if not outright his fault. It's also okay, though. You, you, you will live with Milrow taking some sacks, when he's allowed to use his legs like he did. Extending the play, scrambling, making stuff happen. I will live with some sacks if it gets me 155 yards on the ground despite it. O-line allowed eight pressures against LSU. This was the single biggest concern we had going. Can you protect Jalen Milrow? At least on offense, that was a big concern. Not a problem. Yeah, Perkins had a sack. Uh, you know, Pear Shane had a sack. I think that's who it was. Doesn't matter. Yep, drop 42. O-line. Picking the right time to peak. So grade the Alabama's offensive line against LSU. A, B, C, D, or F. Sound off in the comments section. Overreaction number five. We've been plenty mean to Tommy Reese. And we're going to give him an A+, plus because they dropped 42 against the bad defense. This is the exact offense we thought we were going to see this season. This is the type of ground attack that we were excited to see. The O-line wanted a dominant up front, right? Jalen Milrow has four rushing touchdowns. Jace McClellan has one. Roy Dale Williams has one. If you can't do math, that's six rushing scores. They finally allowed Jalen Milrow to use his legs. I mean, again, you, in general, you know, college less to an extreme because, you know, there's some more, uh, there's triple option stuff. When you run the ball, double as often as you throw it, normally means you won, especially when you're averaging six yards a carry, including the two kneel downs that they had. That's really good. You saw some more Kendrick Law usage in the backfield, which we kind of teased was going to be a possibility there. Call him, uh, call him Debo Law or something along those lines. Who knows? Which actually the body type kind of fits there. So took some shots to Kobe Prentice, headed to the 122 yarder. Didn't hit all of them. You saw some more Jam Miller early. Still would not be opposed to seeing some more Justice Haynes, but you know what? How can you complain when you run the ball 46 times for actually with the, with the, the two kneel downs? When you run the ball 44 times for 291. That's really good. Jan Miller even got going a little bit. Four carries, 17 yards, 4.3 average. 
the entire ground game was clicking. Jalen Milrow, 20 for 155 and 7.8. I, I, I liked what I saw from Jan Miller. I loved what I saw from Roy Dale Williams. Liked what I saw from Jace McClellan. This is a good unit up front. I think you can, or a good back foot, I should say, when the O-line's doing their job up front. Miller was a nice change of pace back. Again, not mad if we see some more Justice Haynes, but that was a really, really great effort out of Alabama. I thought the play calling was much improved as well. So what do you think? Play calling is always kind of a, a results-based business, fair or not. You, no one cares about the process. You just want the, the, the results. What's this Tommy Reese's best game calling plays? One for yes, zero for no.